And hello, Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Welcome to another episode of Steelers Six Pack with Tony. I'm your host, Tony Defio. And I thank everyone for joining me on this lovely Friday evening in Pittsburgh. And I hope it's lovely wherever you happen to be right now in Steeler Nation. And before I continue with tonight's show, I would ask you please to like and subscribe to our Behind the Store Curtain YouTube channel. We bring you live shows each and every day and night. We have this show on Fridays. And earlier on, on Friday night, we, we have the Touchdown Under with Matty Peverall and Mark Davison. Uh, we'll have shows for you on Saturday when the Steelers take on the Seahawks at Aquashore Stadium for their first preseason game. Uh, we have uh, there'll be some post game stuff. Sundays uh, we'll have some uh, new live shows this fall, this summer and fall. Uh, Mondays we have the Hangover with Brian Anthony Davis and Shannon White. Tuesday we have the Scobro Show with Dave Schofield and Rich Schofield. Wednesday we have Know Your Enemy with Jeffrey Benedict and Shannon. Uh, Thursday, we have the preview with Jeff Hartman, Dave, and Brian. Um, we have the the We Run the North on Sundays, I believe, or I, that's going to be changed around with the new uh, with the Steelers playing on Saturdays and Sundays uh, from here until the end of the season. But that's uh, Kevin Tate, and, and and he always has some pretty cool guests on, and they discuss all things AFC North. We have. Um, here we go to Steelers uh, show with Brian. Uh, that'll be the debuting again in, in the summer and fall. And of course, you can catch all those shows live also on Facebook. Every time they're, they come out on YouTube, they're also on Facebook. And uh, you can catch all those shows as a fact on the, any audio platform, anywhere where you can find audio podcasts, you can find Behind the Steel Curtain. And of course, we have... Uh, audio only shows that you can find on any audio platform, including let's ride with Jeff Hartman, uh, the war room with Matty Peverall, what he's talking about with Kyle Christ and his friends, the Steelers fix with, with uh, Jeremy Betts and Andrew Wilbar. Um, we have, let's see who else. I miss out oh, the stat geek with Dave. Uh, so we have a whole host of shows. You can catch all those shows uh, each and every week. And of course you can, Check us out always on the editorial side on Behind the Store Curtain, the website. We bring you news, commentary, film breakdown. Anytime there's breaking news, anytime there's somebody with a strong opinion, anytime there's a, a trade or anything like that, you can find it on Behind the Store Curtain, the website. It's the hardest working Steelers site on the internet. It's your one-stop shop for all your Steelers needs. You will not be sorry. And let us check out the live chat here on this Friday night eve of the Steelers' first preseason game. First one in is Steeler Chick 46. Brad Jewett also joins us. George Teston, Jared Devil, Pedro, Al Gamar, who is asking me to smile. Uh, I was having trouble getting on tonight, getting on the uh, getting on the, the air, so to speak. So I have to, I'll have to work my way up to smiling. Right now, I'm on, I'm, I have a frowny face. Brian Brown's with us. Lon Campbell from YouTube. Case and Wright from YouTube. State of the Steelers from YouTube. Uh, he also has a podcast, and he's uh, adding some uh, commentary on the editorial side, so please check him out. Ron Chess. And this is, uh, he says, Tony, good to see you. Almost time for some real football, and that is true. He says, "I miss you, Jeff, Bad Shannon, and the other Jeff with a with a with a G." Danny Owens joins us. Okay, I think I got everybody. So let's talk. Oh, the Cuda seventy. And the Cuda asked, "Does anyone know who tomorrow's captains will be?" Uh, probably not. I don't really think it matters all that much. It's preseason. But if, if, if you can uh, go by last year, it's probably going to be Cam and people like that. But they usually don't announce the captains until right before the season starts, the, re the regular season. So it's really not that important. But uh, uh, I'm sure it'll be the usual suspects. So let's talk about Saturday's game, the preseason lid, li lid lifter, and what to look for. 
And of course, I'm sure people have been covering this all week. So you, you, you have a pretty good idea what we're all looking for and what you're looking for. But of course, it's you have to start with the quarterbacks. And, and, and I know it sounds easy to say quarterbacks and it's a cliche, but this year it's very important. So, you know, I want to see what Mr. Bisky does. According to Mike Tomlin, he's going to get roughly a quarter with the first team. They're all going to play roughly a quarter, whoever does play. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't suspect everybody on the first team is going to play. I, I don't suspect Najee Harris, who's been dealing with a foot injury, will play. Um, Pat Fryermuth has been dealing with some injuries, a hamstring, so he might not play. Chase Claypool has been hurt. But whoever's in there uh, from the first team, they'll play about a quarter. So I want to see how much Trubisky does with the uh, with the first team offense. We've heard some things from camp. Uh, he's been struggling. Uh, the entire first team offense, aside from George Pickens, who is essentially a first team uh, player already, has been struggling. Uh, so I want to see how that goes because um, it looks at this point like Trubisky's going to open up the season as the starter in Cincinnati. So it's vital that that he um, shows us something uh, against some other teams. Uh, people have been pointing out all day, and I, I never really thought of this. When the uh, the two units from, from the same team are going up against each other every day at, at training camp, offense versus defense, they tend to uh, to become familiar with the uh, tendencies of uh, of the other side. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, even though there's not going to be much game planning from Matt Canada and, and uh, um, Terrell Austin, it'll be interesting to see how things unfold against a different team, particularly on the offensive side. Uh, so I just want to see how, how, how Trubisky looks because uh, he's going to get the first crack at replacing Ben um, starting on Saturday night. I want to see how the offensive line looks, of course. I mean, I think it's there's a good chance that it is improved. I think Mason Cole and uh, Jeff Daniels are going to add a lot to that line, the interior of the line anyway, center and, and right guard. Um, you, you have to love uh, Dan Moore's, th the experience he gained last year as, as a rookie at left tackle. So I'm going to see how he does. Uh, Kendrick Green presumably has the, the inside track on the left guard, the starting left guard spot uh, over Kevin Dotson at the moment based on uh, – the activity at training camp so far. So I want to see how he does after struggling mightily last year at center as a rookie. Uh, I just want to see how much he's improved. Uh, if he's gotten stronger in the off season, I think his biggest problem last year wasn't his athleticism. That should be a benefit to him from what everybody's been saying uh, in this uh, zone blitz scheme that they're this zone blitz blocking scheme that they're going to run. They're planning on running anyway. So the athleticism should benefit him, but is he strong enough to not get pushed back in the quarterback's face like he did all of last year from the center position? So I want to see how he looks. As far as the defensive side, I mean, you know, let's 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 be real. I, I'm not expecting to see much on that side of the ball. I don't I don't expect TJ Watt to play, and it'd be crazy if he if he played one snap this preseason. To be on, honest with you, staying with Cam Hayward. Same with Mika Fitzpatrick. And those are your three best defensive players. They're, they're first team all pro type players. Uh, all three levels of your defense, your best player from each level of your defense. They're not going to play tomorrow. So I don't know. I'm not going to be looking for anything from a, a collective standpoint from the defense, but individually, I'd like to see some things from uh, Louder Milk and, and Lee Al. I'm really excited about him because I really didn't know what to think of him you know, after he was drafted and all throughout the off season, but the reports out of training camp so far for uh, the Mar the Marvin Leal have been pretty glowing. So I I'd like to see um, what he does tomorrow. And of course, uh, high Smith, I don't know how much he's going to play, but I want to see what he does. And, and of course the backups to TJ Watt and high Smith um, so far uh, skipper and I'm sorry, based on last year to be uh, Tunska skippers in the mix, uh, those kind of people. I suspect Devin Bush is going to play. Um, he's in a fight for the starting uh, inside line linebacker spot up, you know, alongside Miles Jack, who's by all accounts has looked really, really good. Uh, so 
it's between uh, between Bush and Spillane who wins the other job, and I think it's it's par it's 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 paramount for the Steelers that Bush wins that job because I think he's a more dynamic player. If he if he's the real deal, he's going to be a more dynamic player than Robert Spillane. But they seem to like Spillane a lot. Um, if Miles Jack can be uh, <laughs> what they needed Devin Bush to be, then maybe Spillane could be the new Vince Williams, that uh, heavy hitting uh, run stuffer. So we'll see. Uh, as far as the, the rest of the secondary outside of Fitzpatrick, uh, <laughs> I don't know how much uh, Sutton, Wallace, and, and Weatherspoon are going to play, but you know I know they've been uh, <laughs> they haven't looked they haven't, apparently haven't looked that great at training camp. But then again, uh, they're going up against uh, <laughs> what right now who right now has to be a a favorite for rookie of the year in George Pickens, and apparently he's made everybody look foolish. And of course, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're a, a cornerback, I mean, you have to rely, especially on in, in today's uh, NFL, you have to rely on, on the pass rush and the Steelers are obviously uh, the best in the business at that. And they have been for the last five plus years. And you really can't truly rush the passer at training camp. I mean, you can simulate it, but it's not the same as in a real game. So I'm sure that'll, that, that, aspect of the game will help them out the secondary, but I want to see how Wallace does. If he plays Weatherspoon and Sutton, I want to see what they, what, what they do. Um, but outside of that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's individual things. And, and as the title of the show suggests, uh, Saturday night could be that opportunity for Kenny Pickett to finally show us what makes him special as a first round pick at quarterback. He's, Again, according to Mike Tomlin, he's going to be playing with the third string and uh, the third the third team uh, offense, and he should get in there maybe late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Um, you know, obviously, you've, you've been following along uh, with the reports out of training camp, and you know, based on just about everybody who's uh, been there, Mason Rudolph's been the most consistent, um, but Mason Rudolph really hasn't wowed anybody. He's just been consistent. Trubisky struggled. Uh, Pickett, you know, he's been up and down, which is to be expected from a rookie quarterback in the NFL. But the thing I've heard mentioned about him a few times now, um, which really has intrigued me, uh, I was listening to the fan a few weeks ago and they had Brian Baldinger. He's a ex offensive lineman. He's a current analyst in the, for the NFL, you know, for, I don't, I forget what, network he's working for he's bounced around but they have him on weekly and what what he said about Pickett's ability to make things happen uh on the move and and you know about downfield you know look you know completing passes on the move uh he, he said he reminds him a little bit of Patrick Mahomes and you know he cautioned the hosts of the show that he's not saying he's as good as Mahomes uh at that part of the game, but he said he reminds uh, him of Patrick Mahomes when he, when he rolls out and, and throws on the run. And Jerry Dulac said basically the same thing the other day when he, when he was uh, uh, on Mark Madden's uh, daily show. Uh, he said that's that's without a doubt his biggest strength right now is throwing on the run. That's what he does better than anything. And, you know, for as athletic as Trubisky is, and he's probably the best athlete of the three quarterbacks that are that are um, getting the, the bulk of the work at training camp, you don't really hear much about him wowing anybody with his, you know, ability to, to throw in the move. And for the four years at, at, at Chicago, I mean, you know, he was he was steady. I mean, he had 64, 64 touchdowns, 38 picks. He was okay. Took him to the playoffs one year. But he never really had that it moment, you know, he never really wowed you, which, you know, for a guy who was picked second overall in 2017, you, you'd think you would have seen that at, you know, over four years and you never really did. And of course, last year he didn't play, but you know, a few games here and there because of, uh, he was Josh Allen's backup, at the bills. And of course, Rudolph, you know, we, you know, he, he's been, he's played like a backup up to this point. You know, he's been steady at times. He struggled at times. And, uh, but he's never really provided that it, that wow moment either. Um, maybe he will this year, you know, if he gets a true shot at starting, who knows, but 
he, he strikes you more as a when a, you know the, the the person I keep seeing him compared to meaning Rudolph is Neil O'Donnell you know maybe you know that, that's his ceiling a steady guy you know if he puts it all together that's who he could be which you know Neil O'Donnell wasn't a wow you kind of quarterback so maybe Kenny Pickett has has a chance starting on Saturday when he when he when he comes in you know even before he he, he learns how to read defenses, diagnose defenses, uh, uh, you know, learn how to uh, pr- uh, progress through his reads when he goes back to pass. Maybe the thing that, that, sh- that, that jumps out before anything else is his ability to make things happen uh, on the run, you know, and maybe that, that could be the thing that separates him from, from the other two. And maybe it doesn't win him the starting job, but let's say Trubisky, wins the job and the offense is kind of struggling over the first three or four weeks. Maybe the, the coaches have that in the back of their mind that look, this, this offense needs a spark. And we saw what Pickett did during the preseason, you know, yeah, it was against second and third stringers, but he seemed to provide a spark when he was in there. He, he, he can make some things happen with his legs. Uh, uh, he, he, he provided some exciting moments during the preseason. Uh, and that might be what ultimately gets him into the lineup quicker uh, than maybe he would have otherwise. You know, cause, I mean, I think that, that's what you want to see from your, your first round quarterback. You don't, you don't expect him to, to, to come in and, and get it right away. You, you don't expect him to, again, to be able to diagnose defenses. He's probably going to make mistakes, but, at some point, you want to see that it factor that most that all great starting quarterbacks have. And so I think this preseason, again, starting on Saturday, could be a time when Kenny Pickett gets to show us that. If, if it's in there somewhere, maybe he'll, fl- he'll show some flashes of it during this preseason. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm most excited about. I mean, obviously the quarterback play in general, but uh, Kenny Pickett when he comes in there, uh, we'll have to wait a couple hours apparently to see, to see him, but, but um, it, it's going to be, I think, I think he might get a standing ovation when, when he comes in there. But again, all three quarterbacks I think are, are intriguing as far as, uh, you know, Trubisky can, can prove uh, to the doubters that he has that number two overall pedigree in him and, and, and he, he can still make something special out of his career. Mason Rudolph would really prove a lot of people wrong. If he, if he uh, shows out this preseason and of course, you know, obviously Pickett being the rookie from Pitt, that's a story in and of itself. Just the fact that he's from Pitt, but the fact that he's just, uh, the first round, the Steelers' first first round pick at the quarterback position since Ben Roethlisberger retired, and they they picked him months after he retired. That's a story. So, all three are going to be intriguing. Um, so, uh, we're literally less than twenty four hours away at this point from from kickoff. So, uh, I can't wait to see it. And I have a, a two dollar super chat before I. Uh, Lose it from Sean Manahan. <laughs> he says, touchdown, Ray Ray. I'm, I got to be honest with you, Sean. I don't know what that means. Uh, if you're talking about Ray Ray McLeod, he's, he's of course, not here anymore. But uh, at any rate, I thank you for the $2. It's always, a, it's always welcome. I don't get very many of those anymore. So I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm indebted to you. But let's uh, move on to the next topic. And... Uh, that will be that would be something I I I think is hilarious, and that's um, the Ravens since what I guess September or August of 2016, they've won 21 straight uh, preseason games. Now, what that means, quite honestly, I don't know why why they're. Um, so determined to win preseason games. Uh, again, I don't know, but there seems like a lot of people are kind of mocking the Ravens for this. And as they, you know, I mean, not that the Ravens are, 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 uh, 
necessarily boasting about this, but people are, but it is a thing. And, and it's the longest streak since the, I guess the Packers from 59 to 62. I forget how many in a row that they won, but this is the longest streak since then 21 straight. But, you know, there's that element of, of, of fans and, and, and the media that just like has this such great respect for John Harbaugh. And it's almost like there's like a macho level of uh, respect that they have for him, like an alpha. He's like, Oh, he's like, he's like, you know, people, people always say about him, you know, he does more of a flash and Mike Tomlin does less with more, you know, that kind of thing. You know, if, if only John Harbaugh had a much better roster, he would do, he would, he would be the best coach ever. But although, you know, forget the fact that he's one of the people responsible for <laughs> putting the roster together. But anywho, uh, there are people who are kind of like, ex, you know, ex, impressed by the fact that the Ravens have won 21 games in a row in the preseason. But when you consider the fact that just about every team treats preseason the way they want to treat it, whether, you know, they want to, uh, work on certain parts of their game or they want to, you know, if you're a, a, a young coach with a, a young and struggling team, maybe you want to prove a point. Um, obviously Mike Tomlin uh, has been very cautious in the preseason with, with uh, how he uses his veterans and some valuable younger guys. Um, but, you know, the overall, uh, the overall, I guess, philosophy that was preseason is that teams are essentially just trying to work out the kinks for the regular season. They're trying to see what they have, and mostly the the, the younger guys are trying to make decisions on on their on their final uh, what fifty three man roster. So, you know, I guess if you try hard enough, <laughs> you can win a lot of preseason games in a row because it's kind of like playing. Um, well, at least back in the day when I played video games, playing the computer on easy, you, you know, you're always, you always, you, you would always win, you know, cause you know, it's just, it, it was just so easy to win. Um, and, and the, the computer was so predictable, especially when, you, when it was on easy. Um, so I don't really know if that's anything to boast about. And, you know, if he's putting, if Harbaugh's putting his, his players in harm's way, I, I don't know what, good that does for him and in, in, in this team for, for the regular season if you get somebody hurt in the preseason somebody valuable well what what good does that do you once the season starts say you won that game yippee but you lost somebody uh, important you know uh i just I, again i obviously i'm a Steeler fan and i think the most of the rest of the uh behind the store curtain crew of writers and podcasters that they're not that fond of John Harbaugh. I've, I never have been either, but there's just something about him that people just, I don't know. They just, whatever he, anything he does, he, he, he gets praise for it. Like, like last year when, when uh, he went for two twice, remember it was like towards the end of the year, he went for two twice, once against the Steelers and, and another time, um, you know, he was, he was down by a touchdown you know, and, and they scored a touchdown with seconds left. And instead of uh, kicking the extra point to send it into overtime, he tried to go for two. They lost both games and, you know, they missed the play. I mean, they were, they had a lot of injuries, but they also maybe could have made the playoffs had they won one or t both of those games. And, you know, people were just like, Oh, I, it didn't work, but it was the right call. Uh, I liked the call. It was gutsy. Like, how can you say that? How can you say it was the right call to go for two twice and fail twice um, when it, it cost the Ravens, basically it cost them the, the playoffs, uh, maybe even the division title. How can you say that? You know, uh, it, it's not gutsy. It's stupid. You have the best kicker in the, on the, on the, on the planet and Justin Tucker, a guy who beat the, the lions last year in, in Detroit with a, a 66 yard field goal. Uh, you know, to me, if I'm John Harbaugh, I would take my chances in overtime with that guy on your side as your kicker. I mean, Steeler fans have seen that however many times with, with Tucker. You don't want any part parts of that guy in overtime or at the end of a game, at the end of regulation, whether it's at Heinz Field or, or, or uh, M&T Bank Stadium. Oh, I said Heinz Field, Aquashore Stadium. 
Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't know why he was getting praised for that because I think it was stupid. It wasn't gutsy. It was stupid. You know, if you if you compare it to the real real world, um, going up to a, a a beautiful woman who's who's hanging out with three or four other beautiful women uh, and trying to start a conversation with her, that's gutsy. But going up to a beautiful woman who's clearly with her boyfriend or, or husband and trying to start, that's stupid. You know, and to me, what Harbaugh did last year with the, um, by going for two twice and failing twice, that was stupid. That wasn't gutsy. That was dumb. Again, you know, he should have, he should have, uh, 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 used the advantage that he had on his side and Justin Tucker and, and sent those games into overtime. And he, he may have come out a victor once or twice. Um, and as far as, 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 you know, how important it is to the overall success of the regular season, you know, uh, trying to win every game in the preseason, does it, does it carry over to the regular season? Well, if you look at the, the Steelers record since 2016 versus the Ravens, the Steelers record in, in, in the regular season is, uh, I did the math, 62, 33, and 2. The Ravens are 60 and 37 over that same time span. So there's no, it hasn't helped them beat out the Steelers in terms of um, overall record and how many division titles have the Ravens won since 2016. Let's see, they won, they won in 2018, they won again in 2019. The Steelers won in 2016, 2017, and 2020. So, you know, uh, of course, and then, then the Bengals won last year. They, they almost won the Super Bowl. So it hasn't translated into success during the regular season. So, I mean, your injuries are involved, but, you know, maybe some of those injuries could have been pre prevented if you weren't going uh, all out during the play, uh, preseason. So uh, yay for John Harbaugh, but it, uh, winning in, in – the preseason means absolutely nothing. And how I, how do I uh, know that? Because I don't know anybody else's record in the preseason dating back to 2016, other than the Ravens. I don't know what the Steelers record is or anybody else in the preseason. Um, you know, so I, I don't think it's something, you know, Steeler fans and national fans and the media, they, they, kind of mock Mike Tomlin for the whole never having a losing losing season thing since he was hired in 2007. But I mean, this that's way more impressive than not losing a preseason game for a half a decade. Uh, who cares? All right. I have one more topic I wanted to co uh, cover actually maybe two, but, um, uh, and that involves the preseason. And if I know my media members, if I know my fans, like I do, they're going to complain on, on, uh, during the game on Saturday or after the game on Saturday, uh, about how boring the game could possibly, you know, if it's a boring game, which a lot of preseason games are pretty boring, you know, it's not real football. Uh, why, why don't they play more starters? Um, they need to do something about this. Actually, they don't need to do anything about it. Um, it might not seem this way, but this is pretty much how the preseason has always been. It's probably more prominent now uh, with salary the salary cap uh, being a part of the NFL and free agency, and and you know these players' contracts are, are becoming more and more lucrative. So you don't want to. You don't want to uh, put your in, your big investment in harm's way in the preseason, but you know if you go back decades, uh, the preseason was pretty much always a time for the the uh, the young guys and the backups to get a lot of playing time. Yeah, maybe the starters got more back then, but it was still mostly about the backups. Uh, and, and, and the rookies and trying to find those last eight, nine, 10 people on your roster. It may have seemed more exciting back, back 30, 40 years ago, but we also didn't have the entertainment options we have now. So, 
know, if you're sitting around in 1984 or whatever, 1978, and you have three channels and maybe cables in its uh, infancy then, but the the selection is is pretty blah. You know, if you're sitting around, you know, you're you're playing those little boring. Uh, where they they probably seemed exciting at the time, but those little handheld football games and you, know, you didn't have a whole lot to look forward to. So when a football game came along, you're like, yes, this is exciting. So you know, that's probably why it seemed more. Uh, it seemed like a better product back then, but it probably wasn't. It's just your your memory um, is a bit fuzzy. And in the context of the time, it was an exciting part of the week because there wasn't a whole lot going on in terms of, of entertainment options compared to today. Uh, but today, there's just every everything is, uh, you know, we have access to everything. You know, you can go back and watch any football game on YouTube from whatever decade, going back five, six decades, if you want. You can, you know, you can go watch uh, endless amounts of uh, music videos. You know, people are always complaining about MTV not playing uh, music videos anymore, but like, who cares? I mean, you just go on YouTube. It's it's way better than MTV ever was because you, you can put on any song you want, any video you want. You can go back and watch Michael Jackson's uh, entire uh, uh, catalog of, of music videos if you want. You can do whatever. So why, why people still want MTV to put videos on, it makes no sense to me. So we just have so many more options now that it makes... Uh, the current preseason product in the NFL seem pretty, pretty uh, uh, substandard, but it's pretty much always been substandard. So, just uh, you know, everything gets hyped up so much now that like we, we spend all with social media, we spend all week hyping up these games, and I can't wait for football. Just 24, 24 more hours till football, you know, and then when it, when it arrives, it's like all right, it's this is kind of. It's kind of a. Uh, it's like it's like eating uh, eating cornflakes without sugar. It, it tastes okay, but it could taste better. So just remember that tomorrow. It's just for uh, it's for you. You, you want to look at individual players. You're, you're not going to see uh, the mega stars uh, when 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 Pittsburgh takes the field, but you will see you know some interesting uh, players take the field and. Uh, Namely, I mean, you know, I, I wanted to say this for last, if I can touch on my last topic, and that's George Pickens. I, I just I just can't wait to see this guy. I mean, like everybody, everybody's talking about him. It's 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 almost at a point now where if this guy isn't a, a, a strong candidate for rookie of the year, I will be shocked. I mean, I mean, you hear his teammates talk about him, you hear these reporters talking about George Pickens, and he's not just a a, a, you know, a guy who, you know, can run go routes. I mean, he does everything. He does everything well. And, and you know, you, when you hear people like Mark Caballi and, you know, Jerry Dulac and all these reporters who, you know, who are on the scene, they keep talking about, you know, no matter who the quarterback is, they, they look, even including Trubisky, they look for Pickens. They're already depending on him. Uh, you know, as, as a, as a prime target. So, I mean, this guy, you know, has a chance just to, just to, to, to be something special, you know, like, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I don't want to get too crazy with it because, you know, <laughs> all, all it could take is a couple of uh, bad preseason games to change everybody's uh, perception of him. But uh, based on everything you're hearing out of training camp, he's, his legend just continues to grow and the expectations continue to grow. So I just, uh, I can't wait to see George Pickens. Um, I think the fact that when, when, they, when they released the, the uh, depth chart last week, he was already listed as a starter alongside Claypool and Johnson. I think that, that speaks volumes. Um, and I think if, if, if the line is, is, is improved and if the quarterback play is, is above average to even to better, depending on who the starter is, I think George Pickens can be a, a special weapon for them this year. So I'm certainly looking forward to that. And I have a, another super chat, a $5 super chat. Maybe, maybe my, uh, my guilt trip worked. Let's see who, who gave me the $5 super chat. I got to look for it. Bear with me. Uh, maybe it's an earlier one. 
All right, let's see what, what, see what it says here. This is another one from Sean. I, I can't find it, but I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, it's another from Sean Manahan who, who donates five. Thank you. And he says, hating on Jim Harbaugh because he's a Harbaugh is like hating on Rob Ryan because he's related to Rex. I mean, he never did well against us. So why the hate? I'm talking about John Harbaugh. Uh, he's done he's done his fair share of damage against the Steelers over the years. Um, you know, it's I think it's natural to hate John Harbaugh, but I just think he gets he gets credit where credit necessarily isn't always due. And last year with the whole two point thing, as I said earlier in the show, I mean that was just stupid. It was just stupid. It was downright stupid. When you have Justin Tucker, uh, you know, and and and. It, it, and you instead of sending the game into overtime, you try to go for it, go for two, and, and you lose both games and you miss the playoffs. It was just stupid. And and the whole trying to win in the preseason thing, when it doesn't seem to translate to, over to the regular season, uh, all you're doing is putting your 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 top players in harm's way. Just dumb. It's not macho. You know, uh, sometimes uh, you know people used to criticize Franco Harris for for uh, going out of bounds instead of, instead of taking an extra uh, uh, hit and, and trying to get an extra half yard or so. But when he retired, he had more carries than any quarter, uh, any running back in the history of the NFL. And he finished second when he retired, he was second all time in, in yards. And, and of course he had four Super Bowls, the Super Bowl MVP, and, you know, he's still doing pretty good today health wise. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's better to be smart than, than to be tough and macho you know, as, as if, uh, these guys aren't tough just from being out on, on the field. So, all right, let's see what we have as far as the, uh, and thank you again for the five bucks, uh, Sean. Let's see what we have in terms of, uh, of questions and comments. And this is from, uh, 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 let's see. I, Here's one from George Teston, and he says, I heard that Zach Wilson got hurt tonight. And, uh, yeah, well, I won't, I won't finish that. But, yeah, Zach Wilson got hurt, and there's a uh, – there's, I mean, obviously, a young guy like Zach Wilson, his second year in the league, second overall pick in 2021, he has to play. And I did see that, and it, and it was pretty early in the game, so you really can't fault that. But, yeah, um, you know, somebody like Zach Wilson who's – Looks like he has a chance to be a, a really good young quarterback in the league. I mean, hopefully the Jets don't ruin him, but he's hurt. I don't know what the what the extent of the injury is, but yeah, he definitely got hurt. Uh, so yeah, you just never know. So the more you put these guys in harm's way, uh, the more you increase your chances of getting hurt. Brian Brown says of uh, John Harbaugh uh, and, and the Ravens in their preseason streak, how many championships, trophies do you get for winning in the preseason? Zero. And you know, like, like I wrote about the other day, like, okay, I went, I always forget about this. I actually attended Bill Cowers first game. It was a preseason game against the Eagles at three river stadium. My brother and me back in 1992, I was at that game. Like you forget, I always forget that. And, um, I was trying to, cause I want to write about it eventually. Like sometime this summer, you know, as a, a nice preseason piece, I'm going to write about the time I attended Bill Cowers first game in the preseason. And I was, trying, I was trying to look for some uh, archived, uh, you know, news about it and maybe some stats. Can't find any of that anywhere. You can't find any of it. I mean, all I know is the, the Eagles, their first team, you know, they, they were a perennial Super Bowl contender back then, led by Randall Cunningham. I think Reggie White was still on the team back then in 92. And they they just, uh, they were up big on, on the Steelers early. And then the... the uh, the backups and the, the down the liners came in and Pittsburgh almost won. Uh, they were driving for a field goal late and then there was a illegal motion or something. And there was a 10 second runoff and that ended the game. And Bill Cowher was like, Oh, that's a very, you know, he was really, it was his first game. And he was like getting in the, in the official's face. That's a very tactical call at this point of the game. That's all I'm saying. Meanwhile, the referee is probably like, get out of here, kid, go home. It's just a preseason. So my point is, you know, like who knows? I mean, <laughs> Uh, you know, like this, it's so hard to keep track of, of stats in the preseason. So, I mean, for all we know, there might, there might've been a team before the 
Packers that won 40 preseason games in a row. Jerry Devil says Tony was playing ColecoVision back in the day. Well, I was definitely playing Atari 3200 in, uh, in television. Remember in television? Those were some good games. And we thought that was like the state of the art. And it was at the time, but looking back on it, it was pretty primitive. George Teston asks, did you ever play Chess Master in the 1990s? I did play chess on uh, in television. Uh, and actually, uh, when I lived in uh, Bloomfield, when I was uh, 10 years old, my next door neighbor, she actually taught me how to play chess. So at, at 10 years old, I knew how to play chess. And, you know, obviously I wasn't at master level, but I knew how to play. And today I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how to, how to play chess. It's like algebra or calculus. If you don't use it, you lose it. I, I couldn't even tell you how to play chess. I'm back to checkers. And Steeler Chick 46 says of Harbaugh, which I, I said a couple of times, um, Harbaugh cost teams a couple of games. That's what I mean. You know, you know I mean, uh, just because a call is gutsy doesn't mean it's smart. And this one is from just me. Well, hells, what about when Tomlin called for two points versus Dallas about 20 times a few years ago? Maybe lead then that well i mean that was all throughout i mean he was trying to he was trying to to um chase points all throughout that game i, I forget what happened but but uh there was i guess there was maybe an, a missed extra point or something at, at some point in that game and tom was trying to, to to chase points all throughout the game and um it actually made sense to i think they, they did they go for two after they scored on the, the fake uh, spike? Uh, but I think he was trying to put them up by three. That's a little bit different than, you know, when you get to the very end of the game and you're down by one point and a, a extra point ties the game and sends you into overtime. That was, that's a little bit different. You know, obviously hindsight being 2020, Tomlin would have kicked extra points in that against Dallas and not gone for two. I don't remember the particulars as to why he, Kept going for two, but I know he was chasing points to make up for something that happened earlier in the game. That's a little bit different than when you get to the end of a game and you're right there and and you have Justin Tucker and you know. To me, you you uh, you utilize your 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 one of your top weapons and Justin Tucker has been um, one of the Ravens' top weapons for years. And you know, I mean. I, th I think I said this on, on the show recently back during the, um, that, you know, the game that, that Mason Rudolph got knocked out that Ravens game in 2019 and uh, duck helped them uh, take the game into overtime. When, uh, when Marlon Humphrey uh, stripped Juju of the football. And I think the Ravens recovered at like the 45 yard line of, of I think their own 45 yard line. I said to my uncle, I said, I was watching it at his house. I said, that's it. I'm going home. They're going to lose. Justin Tucker's going to kick a field goal. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happened. So that's a weapon you should try to utilize in overtime. If you're, if you're whoever, ha whoever coaches Justin Tucker, and it just so happens to be uh, John Harbaugh for, for his, for Tucker's entire career. Oh, I see Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Sean never had a, a, a an issue with Jim Harbaugh, but Jim Harbaugh apparently is a bigger uh, wang, I guess that's what Brian calls him, than uh, than even John Harbaugh. I think Jim Harbaugh is like probably the one that embarrasses everybody at the dinner at, at the family dinner every year. <laughs> so, although he did, he did, he has, he has um, doing some things with uh, Michigan. I think they made the playoffs last year, so you know that's. Uh, I think he finally beat Ohio State, which you know has been a, was a thorn in his side for a, for a long time. Elliot Lewis, maybe everybody can help Elliot. Any suggestions on where I can watch games this season on TV? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, I, that's the thing when you're when you're from Pittsburgh and you live in Pittsburgh, it's hard to. Obviously, they're going to have five national broadcasts, so that's that's easy. Um, as far as like the the regional stuff, I don't know. I mean, you have to find a uh, 
probably have to have to pay for a, a, a TV package. Uh, I think isn't it on like a, a streaming service this year? It's not on Direct TV. I, I, I don't know. Again, when you're when you're when you live in Pittsburgh, you don't pay, you, you you don't pay attention to that stuff maybe as much as people who are living elsewhere, which it's just about everybody on the behind the curtain uh, uh, site as far as uh, the writers and podcasters, other than Jeffrey Benedict. So, yeah, I I, I, uh, I always forget that it's how hard it is for uh, Steeler fans in different cities and states and countries to to, to watch the uh, the games, especially preseason games. I mean, they're they're even more difficult to watch to find. What else we have here? Steeler Freak says, the more regular season games they add, the less starters we will see in the preseason. That's true. Um, and also, you know, when people say things like, uh, I've heard this said, well, they should have just, they should just get rid of preseason games. They're never going to, if they get rid of preseason games, you know what's going to happen? They're going to add more regular season games because the owners want that 20 game model it's been in effect for quite some time i think it started out like 14 regular season games and six preseason games and obviously went to 16 to 4 and 16 and 4 now it's 17 and 3 they're never going to get you know people don't I, don't I don't know if they realize how much these owners i mean they they um they rely on that preseason revenue you know those however many games they get in the preseason whether it's two or one now, I guess it's either one or two, but back in the day when it was like two and two, uh, two home and two and away, I mean, you know, they counted on that, on that uh, revenue. And yes, the, 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 the contracts are, are huge TV contracts, but you see what they do. I mean, they, 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 they change, you know, they, they, they sell off the naming rights to their stadiums, you know, for like 10 million a year, you know, they, 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 they essentially started the, I don't want to get into this, but they, they essentially started the, uh, there they got the bar the ball rolling for the ultimate, you know, controversy surrounding the anthem stuff a few years ago. Because back in 09, they they accept the money from the defense department to have players come out and, and stand for the anthem. That wasn't a thing prior to 2009. And it was like a, a paltry amount for them. It was like five million. So, you know, these owners, they're <laughs> they're after every cent. Um, they're after every cent. So, you know, if they do away with more preseason games. They're going to keep adding regular season games. There's no way around it. But yes, the the the, the longer or the less the preseason games that they have, the less the starters are going to play. Because obviously, you have to make evaluations on, uh, you know, your backups and your and your rookies and, and who to keep and who to cut and who to send to the practice squad. You know, um, you know, and again, as, as far as uh, Saturday night. I don't expect to see Harris. I, 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 it'd be crazy if Harris pl- carried the ball once during the preseason. Fryermuth, uh, obviously, I think they want to get him in there at some point. But if he's not healthy, then, you know, I think you know what you have. I mean, you don't know what you have because he's a second-year player, but you know he's, he's a talent. So, you know, why, you know, risk him, you know, um, hurting himself more and, and you know, potentially – costing himself games during during the regular season. Even other vets like uh like Alu Alu. I mean Alu Alu uh you know what you have in him. You know he's not he, he's 35 years old. Why risk him in the preseason? Um you know you know he's a he's a valuable player. He's not a, he's not a pro bowler, but he's a valuable veteran like a, a Kimo von Ohoffen. You don't need Tyson Alu Alu to play in the preseason. So uh, you know, I, I wouldn't play TJ Watt one snap. I wouldn't play Cam one snap, uh, Fitzpatrick, any of those guys. Just, you know, you know what you have in them. And people like, you know, Brian and I kind of disagree on this uh, as far as uh, uh, the, the rust factor. And there might be, there's some truth that you, you want these guys to get, to get uh, you know, knock the rust off. But obviously, you know, there's a two, there's now a two week break between the last preseason game and, in week one of the regular season. So, you know, even if you play all of game three, which w- would be crazy, but it, say that happened like in the old days where the, where the, the starters played the entire final preseason game, you have two weeks off before the, before the, the real season starts. So, 
you know, you're going to be rusty again. So. Whoops. What else we have here? Go down to new comments. See what else we have before I sign off. Ah, I finally found, uh, well, I'll, I'll highlight Sean's, uh, Sean's, uh, second, uh, his second, uh, uh, super chat since he was kind enough to donate five bucks to the cause. And again, he says hating on Jim Harbaugh because he's a Harbaugh. It's like hating on Rob Ryan because he's related to Rex. I mean, he never did well against us. So why the hate? You're talking about Jim Harbaugh? I mean, it really isn't a, a huge sample size. I mean, he came up famously short as a quarterback in that AFC championship game, which will always uh, be near and dear to our hearts as Steeler fans. Brian Brown says, I'm sure Seattle's quarterbacks appreciate not having to get crushed by TJ and Cam. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> why, why, why endure that in the, in the preseason if you don't have to? And Stanley Curran says, and Tomlin never calls for two pointers, right? Being sarcastic. Again, Stanley, I'm, there's a difference between going for two midway through the second quarter and having that come back to bite you, which, as just me pointed out, that happened against Dallas. But he couldn't predict the future. I'm talking about at the end of the game when, when uh, you know uh, you, have, you have everything in front of you. Justin Tucker kicks this extra point, the best kicker on the planet, maybe the best kicker in the history of the NFL. We're going to overtime, and I got that guy in my back pocket, and he can win me the game. There's a difference between with Tomlin go, missing a two-pointer in, in the third quarter, the second quarter, and what Harbaugh did twice last year. Okay? Again, another example of people just like just weird love for Jim Harbaugh or John Harbaugh. I don't know what it is about the guy, but my mom hates him, and that's all I need to know. That's all the people need to know, too. If my mom hates somebody, then, you know, you should take heed. All right. Kuda70 says, this preseason will be good for all the new coaches. That's right. They have a new, uh, a new um, line coach, Pat Meyer. Um, I think a new receivers coach. I think there's a new tight end coach, too, if I'm not mistaken. But obviously Brian Flores. Uh, yeah, so it's it's going to be it's going to be an interesting uh, preseason. You know, even though I talked about how boring the preseason is, just for the, the quarterback factor alone, it's going to be more exciting than any preseason we've seen in a while. Because, I mean, there's so much at stake. And there's so so many questions that need to be answered prior to September 11th in Cincinnati. All right. So, and this one from Devin Logan, and I mean, Steeler fans should know what what uh, what I'm talking about because he says, "Did we not all see that game?" He's talking about yes, the the game last year, uh, what November, late November, uh, Mark Andrews. Uh, uh, Lamar uh, missed a wide up of Mark Andrews for a two point. It might have worked. It would have worked if they would have executed, but they, it didn't. It didn't work, and they lost. And there was another one a couple weeks later. And again, the, like people are like, oh, it was the right call. No, it wasn't the right call. The right call is one that works. <laughs> you know, like this isn't. You know, you, you don't get points for for being gutsy. You know, you get points for 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 winning division titles and advancing in the playoffs and the Ravens didn't even make the playoffs and Pittsburgh did. And people were like, Oh, Pittsburgh, this, the, the seventh seed, they're watering it down. Look at Pittsburgh. They, they didn't belong in the playoffs. Well, if the Ravens wouldn't have screwed up down the stretch, maybe they would have made the playoffs and they would have been a more formidable foe uh, for the chiefs. But instead their coach cost them two games because, you know, he wanted to be gutsy quote unquote. All right. On that note, I'm going to call it a night. It was a fun spirited show as always. 
Uh, again, don't forget to check back uh, throughout the, the rest of the weekend for, for as my mic goes out. Anyway, uh, on that note, you guys have a great night, and as always, go Steelers.